the female case moth spends her whole life in a cocoon like this. Some people believe she sings a twilight serenade to attract a mate, but it's not just male moths that have found her inspiring. Putorino are a type of Māori flute inspired by the sound of a female case moth. The shape is based on her cocoon. A putorino is a taungapōro, Māori musical instrument. It is unique in that it has attributes of both a trumpet and a flute. It is also unique in that it has a number of voices, te kōkiri o tāne, a male voice, and te wai o te hini, a female voice. How do you make the different voices? Here I have an example which I've made. This one is based on the one you see here, or inspired by the putorino in the Te Papa collection. Um, so we have Te Kōkiri o Tāne, which is, emerges when one blows through the top of the um, putorino, as so. And then we have Te Wai o Te Hine, which is the female voice, which is when I blow, side blow across the top, we get that. Um, sound quality. And there is a third voice when we uh, actually blow in the centre of the putorino. Wow. These Putorino um, sat in uh, museum collections for a long time as dormant without sounds coming from them. And it's only been within the recent revival of Taungapur or the plane of Taungapur on Māori musical instruments that that sound has been um, recovered. Um, some of these ones do uh, are still able um, to admit the sounds of our tūpuna. They are very important for carvers when they're looking at making or recreating instruments, that they use these as the basis for those. So a carver would look at the shape, the form, the ahua of the putorino, uh, would look at dimensions, the internal dimensions, as, as, as well as the external dimensions, because the internal dimensions dictate the sound quality that you um, obtain from a putorino. Unfortunately, there's a, a real lack of written and oral information or knowledge pertaining to Tongapuro, so we can only say, we cannot say with conviction how they were playing. All we can do is look at the natural environment and with the small amount of knowledge that we do have is rediscover how they would have potentially been played. Here at Te Papa we have a, a group of um, enthusiasts in Tongapuro and we meet regularly to practice um, playing tongapuro, and we use them in the ceremonies we hear, have here at Te Papa, such as our porphyry. So how does it feel to be part of the revival of tongapuro? It's a special privilege to be involved in the revival of tongapuro. It's only recently, within the last 20 or 30 years, that you have reheard these sounds, and they're becoming more of our uh, normal process in our tikanga Māori. Although our historical knowledge of putorino and other taungapuro is limited, the revival in the making and playing of these instruments is helping redefine the traditions in which they were used.